charity shops I find are soothing places. So places that are rather special. People donate items that you cannot believe really exist. <laughs> Down there, conceived and produced Shopkeepers of the World. The idea for the project came from a long standing interest in charity shops and how they serve a community and what they document and the kind of service they provide. The point at which Shopkeepers of the World uh, was born uh, was a particular item that I purchased in a charity shop in Brighton. The lady behind the counter had said, my grandmother knitted that blanket and I took that blanket away and the point of connection between me and her that the blanket had created seemed like a really rich starting point for a project. So today we're at St Leonard's Festival and we're talking to the public about the project um, and we're also um, gathering interviews with the public about the last time they donated to charity. We're looking at using objects to provoke stories across all our projects. This is the ideal place to trial that. We're collecting objects uh, at the point of donation to charity shops and the stories behind them and they're going to inspire a series of installations across St Leonard's and Bexhill. A lot of the objects that are donated are because you know their owners are deceased. So the people who donate them are relatives, and you know so the, the stories are quite sentimental. So we were approached by Esther, who asked if we'd like to become involved, um, and yeah, we immediately thought that's such a, a great idea. We obviously hear lots of stories when people bring things in, um, and you know it's always quite emotive, and it's lovely that someone's capturing those ideas as well. Um, and again, from my point of view, it's a different way of marketing our charity and letting people know about what we do. I am Albert Putroin and I'm an artist working in the St. Lennon's Man Cup. We will be working with a series of psychics which are experienced in uh, psychometry, which is the art of reading objects through touch. And hopefully they will be telling us lots of things about a selection of objects that the volunteers have been collecting throughout the time I've been here. But never assume. Never assume. Once something's no longer used, it's not dead. It still has an energy of its own and the energy of the people or the person who've owned it. I hope that what the project does, or my small contribution to the project does, is to reveal things that are not evident to the eye, but in a way also sort of expose a bit perhaps the, uh, the ecosystem of the shop. We have had some awful, strange things, really. A gun, where I nearly shot somebody with it. Uh, the police obviously had that. A dead cat. Two mice in the bottom of a shoe bag where they'd made a nest. But when people donate things that are dear to them, they're, they're very careful and they're folded and neat and they're sad and so I say we will I'll look after them Today we're at Cass's coffee shop in St Leonard's and we're hosting a first we eat lunch so the idea is if you offer people a free sandwich, a free lunch, they will come, they will open up, they will talk, people will share. It's a first point of contact where anybody can come and have a free lunch and have a conversation either about the project or about charity shops, uh, kind of creating some informal networks there. Welcome to the tour of Shopkeepers of the World. We're really excited to be sharing four very distinct installations and um, interventions in the landscape of charity shops in St Leonard's and Bexhill. There are five 
little fragments to, for you to find out. Look at Beauty's gift to us. Her power is so great. She enlivens the earth, the sky, our soul. I was working with HFS, which focuses on furniture. Sort of over my visits, I was really noticing the amount of office furniture. HFS explained to me that there's quite a lot of offices that shut down in, in the area, and so they gave all their stock to the charity shops. That kind of then drew me to the idea of working around work, to have conversations with people on the day as part of the work about their experience of work. So it was set up that one sewing machine was running off 48 spools to collect 48 stories. And while I'm talking to the people that choose to come in and engage with me in a one-to-one -one performance, I will be stitching onto a shirt. So when I was in the warehouse, I started by volunteering. I particularly found that there was a kind of huge amount of glassware. I chose to work with glasses that have a kind of stem, so a wine glass, or, and they're indicative of kind of celebration or um, ways to say hello and farewell to people, I suppose. Um, and St Michael's Hospice is obviously involved with palliative care, and so it seemed very important to um, make a reflection or acknowledgement of what the hospice actually does. One unexpected thing that's happened as part of the project is the Hastings Furniture Service have invited us to have a stall at Thrift Fest which is a huge festival, one day festival, which is a celebration of thrift in all its forms. So it's a drop-in craft activism workshop. It's connected to the textile work that I did in, done in the charity shop, The Shelter. So the idea is that people can think about something that they care about or a cause, just get a taste of working with, with the handmade and contemplating things as they make things. It's really great to be hosting workshops at Thrift Fest today and introducing the project to the wider community. The model of the project is working really well. We would love to take the learning that we do from this project and roll it out to other places. It's about highlighting the creativity in the everyday and we often talk about making the invisible visible. So those systems and those people and those objects are already there. It's just highlighting through working with an artist and doing creative work actually how important and intrinsic and interesting those systems are. Mm -hmm.